This is a video tutorial for Unit 6, our Day 2 homework assignment, which is pages 3, 4, and 5. Um, this is when we start covalent naming. We're doing covalent molecules. So in class, we learned that the difference between an ionic compound and a covalent compound in one word is metal. Okay. Ionic compounds are made of both a metal and a nonmetal. Now this could be three metals and one nonmetal. It could be one metal and three nonmetals. But if there is a metal in it, it is an ionic compound. It is a covalent compound and will cooperate to share electrons. Covalents cooperate if there are only nonmetals in it. Okay, no nonmetals and no polyatomic ions. Okay, so this first 20 problems, this first set of 20 problems, going from number 1 to 20, you were just saying, is it I ionic or C covalent? And so all you have to do is look for a metal. So that's why I already did these first ones, beryllium and cesium, those are metals, so that has to be ionic. If we come down here and look at number 4 then, and I'm going to push this up so that we can see it, number 4 only has carbon and oxygen in it. And because all of those elements are over here in my nonmetal section, that would be covalent, only nonmetals. Carbon and oxygen again, so that's covalent, only nonmetals. Okay. We get number eight. You have manganese, which is right here, and nitrogen. So that is a metal. Anything on this side of my periodic table, if it's in there, then number eight, manganese and nitrogen would have to ionically bond. If you cannot tell a difference between ionic and covalent, then you can't name them correctly. So go through the rest of those, look for metal. Metals are ionic. If there's a metal in it, it's ionic. All right. You should have this from your notes unless you were absent. If you were absent, push pause and copy these. These are the prefixes for covalent rules naming. Mono, di, tri, tetra, penta, hexa, hepta, octa, nona, deca. You've got to get those memorized. Um, hopefully doing just these three pages in the homework will get them memorized for you. Okay. Now naming covalent compounds I really appreciate. And we're going to start down here at number seven just because we did the first few in class, most of us. Iodine pentafluoride. Now, what we're going to do when we are naming is we are going to take the prefixes out front and turn them into subscripts behind. There are no crisscross, there's no reduce, there's no reduce, there's no erase, there's nothing like that. It's just the letters out front become numbers behind using these. So iodine, there's nothing written out front, which means that there's only one iodine. So I'm just going to say iodine. Penta. So there's my letters out front, becomes a number behind. So penta letters becomes a number five. So fluoride is fluorine, like that. One iodine, five fluorine, IF5. There's the formula for iodine fluoride. Okay. Phosphorus, if there's nothing written out front, that means there's just one of them. And then you've got mononitride. And nitride is nitrogen. Mono, if we come up here, we see mono is just one. So it's just PN. One phosphorus, one nitrogen. Disilicon hexabromide. So the prefix di in front becomes the two after. Hexa prefix becomes hexa is six behind. So disilicon would be SI2. Bromide, BR6. Now, how? For ionic rules, we would reduce to six one third. Do not reduce covalent. All we do, letters out front become numbers behind, and we're done. So you kind of get through. Um, hexacarbon decahydride. Let's skip number 10. Look at this one. Hexacarbon will be C6. Deca is 10, and hydride is just hydrogen. Um, hydride's not one we've done very often, so just C6H10. Hopefully this is a lot easier for you than ionic was. As soon as you get these memorized up top. Okay. Let me flip over to page four for us. All right. Now we're doing the opposite. We're naming. Okay. So if you come up here and you look at example three, what um, they did is they had that was the problem. What is the name of C7I4? So the seven after becomes the letters in front, which is hepta. So hepta carbon tetraiodide. Now be very careful, only, only, only the last three letters change to ide. The first atom, which carbon, we don't call it carbide, we say carbon iodide. Okay. So same thing down here, I2O, 
would be two iodines, diiodine, and then it's monoxide, not diiodide. Only the ending changes to i. So let's work our way down through this side, because we did most of these ones in class. I2 means two iodine. So the prefix for two, if you need to flip over and look at it on the other side, is diiodine. And then seven oxygen would be hepta, and we change ending to ide. So hepta oxide. Now remember, it is a rule that we learned in our notes that we don't say hepta oxide because that puts two vowels there. So it's just hepta oxide. Um, don't stress about that too much, but that is the correct spelling. Down here for this one, it's still diiodine. But now it will be penta oxide because there's only five oxygen. Pent oxide. And remember, you leave off the uh if it's oxygen. So instead of pent uh oxide, it's pent oxide. All right, 29. Oh my heavens, if I didn't have every other student ask me where AT was, and that's okay. It's astatine. We don't talk about it very often, but it's a halogen. It's down here. Astatine, that's how you find that one. And there's only one of them, A-S-T-A-T-I-N-E. Now remember, and it's written up here, the second name always gets a prefix, but mono um, on the first name. Okay, So first name, mono is not used. So I would just say acetine. I would not say monacetine. Okay? And then pentachloride. Okay, you never say mono on the beginning of a name. And they have that over here. Example two, there's one carbon, one silicon. You don't say monocarbon monosilicide. You say carbon monosilicide. All right. Down here, you should use your notes. And we legitimately want you to copy from your notes. It is a good memory device to see it written and then copy it over. If you are absent and you do not have these notes, get these notes from your teacher and then copy them when you get back. That's going to be a better learning device than me just going through them for you. Look at page five. Page five is so much more helpful for you because this is test conditions. Um, if you look at the top, uh, covalent compounds require a nonmetal and a nonmetal. So I'm just going to write NM, nonmetal and nonmetal. Electrons are shared. <coughs> Ionic compounds require a metal and a nonmetal. You need one of each. And again, in one word, what's the difference between ionic and covalent? Metal. That's the difference. And electrons are transferred. Okay. On a test, we would not say using the name or using the ionic naming rules name this compound or using the new prefixes we learned for covalent naming name this compound we would just say name it and it will be mixed up just like these 20 problems are is it ionic or is it covalent so the first thing you have to do is to try and decide if it's ionic or covalent once you decide if it's ionic or covalent then you can move on so we're going to look at this one there are three capital letters which means three different elements Manganese, sulfur, and oxygen. So you should remember that that means that that one must be a polyatomic, even though we didn't put the parentheses there. So we're going to look for those three elements. Manganese, sulfur, and oxygen. Manganese is a metal. It doesn't matter that there's two nonmetals. If there is a metal in it, this is an ionic compound. So we're going to call it ionic. Okay. I would recommend going through and just doing ionic or covalent first. So fluorine, chlorine, there's our covalent. Both nonmetals, oxygen, sulfur, both nonmetals, covalent. Okay, let's skip over to this column because this isn't one we did in class. Calcium and sulf and chlorine. That's ionic because calcium is a metal. Nitrogen, oxygen. Those are both nonmetals. So that's covalent. Potassium, sulfur, oxygen. That is a polyatomic. You should probably put those parentheses in. And potassium is metal, so that's ionic. So what I'm going to do is use ionic naming rules to name the ones that I put I's by. You name the metal, you name the nonmetal, and turn it to I'd. So I'm going to say calcium for ionic, and then I have to check for Roman numerals. Calcium is in the 2A family, so it A always makes A plus 2, which means I just call it calcium because it's always calcium 2. 
and chlorine becomes chloride. Okay, looking at number 13, we already said it's covalent because there's only nonmetals. So I use my new covalent rules, which is prefixes. One nitrogen, I just call nitrogen. Because I do not say mono on the first thing. But one oxygen, if it's the second element, then I would say mono. So I'd say mon o oxide. Okay. And instead of saying mon o oxide, I just said monoxide. Um, nitrogen monoxide. K2SO4. Potassium was my metal, so I name it potassium. Potassium's in family one, so it does not get a Roman numeral, so I just say potassium. And SO4, I would have to look at my list of polyatomic ions, right? SO4, sulf 8. Potassium, sulf 8. Okay. Hydrogen and sulfur are both nonmetals. Now, this is something we said in class, so if you were absent, you missed that. But hydrogen, even though it's over here, uh, it does covalently bond like a nonmetal. So hydrogen we consider a nonmetal. Sulfur is definitely a nonmetal, so that's going to be covalent. Two nitrogens would be di. Excuse me, two. I'm, I'm saying nitrogen. I meant hydrogen. Two hydrogens would be dihydrogen. And then it's just S with no numbers. So that means one S, which would be mono sulfide. I would maybe advise you to go through um, and add parentheses around these polyatomics. Um, it should, probably should have been done for you. PO4, OH. We already did that one right there. Okay. Really, at this point in the semester, you should recognize that those are polyatomics, but um, usually we give those to you on a test. That's mixed naming. Mixed formula writing down below. You're responsible for knowing, again, are you using covalent rules or ionic rules? And it's really easy. The difference is metal. The also, in naming, the difference would be prefixes. If there are prefixes, then it definitely has to be um, covalent. So we'll start working our way down. Calcium hydroxide. Nowhere there does it say mono tetra. So this is probably ionic. If I look at calcium, that's a metal. So yes, this is going to be ionic. Calcium, ionic naming remembers four steps. You use symbols, calcium Ca, hydroxide is OH, it's a polyatomic ion. That's step one. Step two is to write down the oxidation numbers or charges. Calcium is in family 2A, so at A always makes a plus two. Hydroxide's on your list of polyatomics, it's a negative one. Then we crisscross, and we reduce and erase. So calcium one, hydroxide. There's the formula. Okay. Iron to carbonate symbols. CO3 carbonate. Okay. It tells you right there in the name that it's iron 2, so that iron's making a plus 2. And carbonate, if you look it up on your polyatomic list, is a negative 2 right there. So when we crisscross, they're both 2s which means they're going to cancel each other out because they're the same and get left off. FeCO3, like that. Okay. And I knew this is ionic because iron is a metal. Ammonium is a polyatomic, so I'm going to use my old rules. Copper is a metal. Chromium is a metal. Tri, ooh, as soon as you see tri-tetra, that's when we know what we're dealing with covalent um, because there's prefixes. Also, it's sulfur and oxygen. So tri-sulfur, remember we take the letters out front, and make them numbers behind. And tetraoxide would mean four, and actually that's spelt wrong, it should just be tetraoxide without the A, but it'd be S3O4, like that. Okay. So you're going through and you're deciding is it the rules from pages one and two ionic, or is it the rules from pages three and four covalent? Okay, good job, y'all. Um, hopefully, covalent's feeling a lot better. Come in and get some help if you need it.